Hi, this is Chris from Needlepointers.com. I'm here today to show you how to make coil baskets. These baskets are made with yarn wrapped around a cord. Each coil basket can be unique depending on the color of yarns used and the way you coil the cording. As you can see, this one is wider and flatter than this other one, which has higher, more vertical sides. The taller quill basket is about four inches wide, and this one is about five inches wide. I use the thick clothesline cording for the base of my quill baskets along with scrap yarn. So let's get started making these coil baskets. What you need to make a coil basket is clothesline cording or other kind of cording, leftover yarn. Worsted or DK weight yarn works the best for this project, but you can try out different weight yarns and see how it changes the basket look and shape. A yarn or tapestry needle, scissors, and a yardstick or another way to measure. Measure and cut two yards of cording to make a small basket. If you want to make a larger basket, you could cut a longer length of cording. Once you have the cording cut, cut the beginning of the cording on an angle, and this will make it easier to start wrapping. Select your first yarn that you want to use and cut a three yard length of yarn. If you want to change colors faster, cut a shorter length. I don't recommend cutting anything longer than three yards at a time, as the yarn can become tangled and harder to work with. Thread the yarn needle onto one end of the yarn. Start with the tapered end of the cording. Take the yarn end without the needle and lay it with the end of the yarn near the end of the cord. Start wrapping the yarn around the cord, starting about two inches from the end of the cord and working towards the tapered end of the cord. This is the opposite direction that you would expect to start with. Wrap the yarn around the cord in a motion away from you. So you can see I'm wrapping away from myself around the cord. Each wrap of the yarn should lay next to the previous wrap, not on top of it. Leave no gaps between each wrap. If you do see a gap, it is okay to wrap again in that place to fill in the gap. Wrap the first inch towards the end of the cording, then bend the end around towards the cording, like so. Continue wrapping around both tightly, covering all of the cord. And covering up the end. You wrapped a little bit over the section that you already had wrapped, but now you have a nicely covered end of the loop. Continue wrapping up the cord until you can bend the center around to start making a loop. Once you get to that point, then Make sure your yarn is coming up between as if you were going to do another wrap. And then take the end with the needle and put it through the center to secure the yarn and start making the coil. Pull it tight. Then make sure you bring the yarn back up in between so that again it's in the same position where you would be starting to wrap. Then begin wrapping again about 12 times before you secure it again with using the needle. Bring the yarn up in between, wrap it around nice and tight because you want to make a nice tight coil, especially at the beginning. Put the needle through, and again I'm going through the center because we haven't made another round yet and pull the yarn through. Bring the yarn back up to the top and I pull it tight for each one and I begin to wrap 12 more times. And 
And now we're almost to where we've gotten past the center part. Put the needle through. Pull it tight. Bring the yarn up in between again. That kind of locks it in place and gets you ready for the next wrap. Wrap some more. And you can see how I wrap very closely to one another. And I'm trying to make the coil nice and tight. Now I'm past the, the beginning end and I'm going to go through right there. And pull it tight. As you're coiling around, you're making the shape of the basket. The longer you keep the coils flat, the larger the base you're going to have. And as you're coiling, if you place the coil wider, then it's going to keep making the basket wider. If you place the coils more on top of one another, when you're doing the securing stitches, then it will stand up more straight like this one. So keep wrapping and securing every 12 wraps. So I'm going to keep wrapping until I get near the end of this yarn and then I'll be back. So as you can see I'm starting to get a nice little bottom to my basket here and I'm at the end of my yarn so I'm leaving a couple inches there. This is going to just lay against the cording sort of like we did at the beginning. I have my next three yard piece of yarn in my next color. You can keep using the same color. You can change colors. It's all up to you on how you want to make your basket look. Lay the next piece of yarn against the cording in the same direction as your ending piece of yarn and then start wrapping again. We're always wrapping away from ourselves and wrapping one right next to one another and over both of the ends. When you have about 12 wraps, we do the same thing as we've been doing and have the yarn coming up just like you're going to do another wrap and place the needle through in the previous ring. Pull it tight. Bring the yarn up to the same position so it's ready to be wrapped again and start wrapping your next 12. Alright, so you can see I've been wrapping. I've added a couple more yarns on here and I'm continuing to wrap. And I've made it mostly flat, so I'm making a bigger bottom than on my other two. And I'm trying to make it a little bit oblong. At this point, I'm going to start making the sides of the basket. So to do that, what I'm going to do is kind of place the cording a little bit on top of the previous cording. And you want to kind of go up on a gradual. And we still secure it the same way. It's just where do you position the cording? So I'm going to start putting the cording kind of like that on top and covering up a little bit of the previous row as I go. And then I'll put and then after I get around again, then I'll start putting the cording maybe more on top of the previous cording and go straight up. Or if you want it to be a wider bowl, you just put it on a little bit off the edge again kind of showing part of the previous round and you just keep wrapping until you get up to the end. So I'm going to continue working on this until I get to the end and then I'll show you how to tie it off at the end. 
So I'll be back in a while after I finish wrapping the rest of this cord. As you can see, I finished going around and I made my bowl pretty flat with a large bottom and only a little bit of sides on this one. As you can see, you can make many different shapes with the cord and the yarn. So I'm right near the end, and when you get to about an inch from the end, we're going to cut the cord on an angle like we did at the beginning. We want to lay the cord flat, so use a needle and the yarn, and we'll wrap around and just keep stitching into the previous round like we would be securing. We're just going to do it a whole bunch of times to, until it covers up the whole end. So pull tight each time and we want this to taper down and the yarn to cover up all of the cording. So there you can see I have it all covered up. It looks nice. Next we're just going to tie this off. So you can do this on the inside or the outside. I'm just going to run my needle underneath one of the previous loops. Put my needle through the loop to tie it. And then you can run your needle underneath and between some of the loops there to hide the knot and then cut it off. And the quill basket is finished. We hope you enjoyed learning how to make quilt baskets using yarn and cording. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Like and share our videos, and if you're not a subscriber, subscribe to our channel so you won't miss future videos. Visit our website, needlepointers.com, for lots of other crafting tutorials and free projects. While you are there, sign up for our free weekly newsletter so you won't miss new tutorials. Happy crafting!